And welcome to another edition of the Sartorial Geek Podcast by Webster Style. We'll be talking about bow ties, comic books, and everything in between. I'm your host, Webster Style, the man, the voice, the fragrance, coming back one more time. And of course, you, if you heard last time, I was a little bit sick last time, but we're all right as rain. Voices cleared up, and let's jump right into the download. Now, this time of year, spring, is one of my favorite times of year. Not just because of the change in weather as it shifts from the dreadfulness of winter, which hasn't been that bad in recent memory, uh, but still uh, shifting from the cold Christmas of winter to the delightful warmth, sunshine, and just overall pleasant demeanor of spring. But more importantly, spring means baseball. Peanuts, Crackerjack, yelling O oh, at the national anthem. Baseball is so wonderful, so synonymous with spring in my opinion. Opening day is coming very, very shortly. And with that, that means it's time for baseball video games. And since there's only one, we're definitely going to spotlight MLB The Show 23 dropping on all platforms coming March the 28th. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, I talked about the first time inclusion of Negro League players into the storyline. So that is one of the reasons I'm looking forward to this one. Outside the fact that MLB The Show has premiered time and time again, that it is a capable baseball game simulator, whether you want to simulate, be the GM, or just play a random game with your favorite team. MLB The Show is definitely the game to go to. And of course, I was spotlighting it also, even though it's on all platforms, it is dropping day one on Xbox Game Pass. So if you have Game Pass, that is definitely a game to check out and play simply because it's just a wonderful baseball experience and it is that baseball time of year so that's our download mlb the show 23 and on a side note speaking of game pass i have sad news uh one of the biggest things about game pass that they've offered since its inception is that you sign up as a new user and you can get your first month for just one dollar to try out the service well as of the time of this recording that offer is no more. So if you ever wanted to just try out Game Pass and not really have that high cost of entry, as of right now, that is gone. Bye bye. So if you want to try it out, you're going to have to drop that either $9.99 individually for either console or PC or drop that $14.99 uh, for the Ultimate, which gives you that cloud option so i would definitely if you haven't tried game pass before drop to 14.99 try it out uh even if you don't own xbox you can like i said stream it over the cloud try games out on your pc uh it is or your phone wherever you can play games it is definitely a service i think that if you're a gamer regardless of what platform it's something that you definitely should try out because i think you might like it that's just me personally speaking but overall i think that you would like it if you tried it out so that's my sad news to report on game pass no short takes this week there are a bunch of trailers but at the time nothing really struck me to want to talk about uh this week especially moving into the backlog we have with checking or trekking out uh looking at picard season three episodes four through six um overall I am loving this story. I am I'm loving how they are getting the band back together uh, little by little and incorporating the next gen characters into the story. I am at peace with the fact that Picard is uh, no longer Picard simply because of how one it keeps being referenced in this story and how it, even it it seems like it's becoming a vital part of the storytelling as well which i feel as though it was just i don't know season two just really lost a lot of the storytelling and and what they did with that with the things that happened in season one and season one just got on my nerves in many respects as well especially i felt like the 
I felt like Pakari being transferred into the Golden Body was a cop out uh, in many respects with the storytelling of how the season went with the whole android uh, synthetic organisms um, storyline that ran through season one. I, I felt like it was very lackluster. And again, as I said, I felt like it was a, a cop out. Season two did really nothing to illustrate the importance of Picard's new body, in my opinion. Uh, season three now, it seems as though, okay, the fact that Picard's conscience is in this golden body, is in this positronic body. Now that's going to come into importance as we go on through the story, especially with the results of the bounty, which is episode six. Uh, but let's let's go back briefs on each one. Episode four, no one scenario. Uh, I really enjoyed the thoughtfulness of the crew and how various members of the crew from Crusher to Jack to Riker uh, to everyone chimed in on ways to get out of the situation and to come up with something and even bringing Shaw around and having part of his backstory with his uh, first meeting Picard at Wolf 5-9 it was very well done it, the storytelling was very well done. It was very reminiscent of Next Gen and how that Star Trek worked. And not just Next Gen, the whole Berman era of Star Trek, I'll put it that way, uh, because it was very much a team effort. And one of the things that I felt has been lacking with Picard, especially season two, everybody had a side story, but I didn't feel like the resolution, I didn't feel like the story was progressing through team effort um, when we had all of these very interesting and vital players around Picard it just felt like everybody had their own side story and they kind of mashed up in the, end, in the end this one they are doing a very good job of weaving everyone's story together with Picard and with that then going to episode 2 Imposters where we had the return of Rolaren. And I literally, I yelled, I cursed. I yelled and I cursed them all because I cannot believe I was seeing Michelle Forbes reprise the role of Rolaren 30 years later. And the fact that she was commander after, I'm like, wait a minute, she defected, she defected to the Maquis. I'm like, wait a minute, what? what? I, I was so confused. But they laid out the story very well. And they did a good job of tying it into the whole overall infiltration storyline that was going on or was revealed with the changelings. The changelings are up there in the high rankings of Starfleet. It very much reminds me. It, I feel like that the producers went and they rewatched and I, I don't I think it was from season two um, of Next Generation Conspiracy. And they took that and they're like, we can do this and we can do this better. And we can use a foe that is much more uh, sinister and has a real reason to want to destroy the Federation, to infiltrate the Federation. And even with that evolving the changelings to a point where they can mimic down to blood flow and organs instead of just looking like Odo or anyone else that they replicated during Deep Space Nine. I find it interesting and also it's a very natural evolution of the species in my opinion because you remember with Odo it was he looked that form because he had a very hard time mimicking certain features on a lot of species and he just stuck with that even though he got better it was one of those things where, okay, this was something 30 years ago, and now the species has evolved to be able to replicate down to the organ level. And then to retain that even in death, instead of just going back into the ooze. Now, one of the things I didn't like, I felt like when they turned into the ooze, they made it look more like the blob um, instead of just sort of, I don't know, a benign sort of 
uh, liquid goo creature as they did in Deep Space Nine. But I understand, you know, bigger budget, you get to do different things, and that's totally understandable. But I really enjoyed that. And then going to uh, Ro was there for one episode, spoilers alert, and they blew her up. But even how they did it in the story to set up the bounty and you set up the chase that then commenced with all the Starfleet chasing after the rest of the crew of the Titan in the bounty and bringing in the forge and his other daughter and going to Daystrom and bringing back data or I was, I was nervous about this when I, when Brent Spiner was coming back because they they've effectively killed data twice in season one and season two <laughs> and i don't i didn't understand how they were doing this but i will say i like how they brought back brent spiner because brent spiner is not really data i like how that soon descendant we saw die his last mission or his last sort of experiment was trying to combine data law b4 and lore into one composite organism with a replica of the sort of golden technology to where the the body aged like a human person i thought that was a very ingenious idea of bringing brunt spider back and he's data but he's not data he's everybody and even using him as the ai for the daystrom computer which brought us moriarty and had that great flashback to um encounter at farpoint with Riker. they are just hitting every there there is nothing i don't like about any of these episodes there's nothing i don't like about the season so far even with Riker getting captured and then um, Vedic capturing Deanna, like that is, I really enjoy even the moment with, with Seven and, and, and Jack and you see her reminiscing about Voyager. This series so far has just been knocking every episode out of the park this whole season. And I can't believe we're more than halfway done it has just been a, as a Star Trek fan, as someone who became a fan fan, a Trekkie because of Next Generation. Like, I like Star Trek, the original series growing up. But when Next Gen came out, that was my Trek. Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, Voyager. That's the Trek I grew up with. And this series has been such a love letter to us while not destroying the legacy of star trek or even you know saying anything else to star trek isn't star trek it's just been a wonderful ride and i can't wait and to see how this season ends and there's so much really yet to be revealed and with only four episodes left i'm hoping the storytelling doesn't suffer because of the breakneck pace they may have to are uh, utilized in, in in order to move the story along over the next few episodes. So that's my take on Picard episodes four, five, and six, No One Scenario, Imposters, and The Bounty. We're going to take a break and then come back and we're going to talk with Rob Kessler of Go Tyless for the Satoyo Slice to talk about his beautiful invention to keep your scholars crisp and neat even without a tie what's going on everybody it's webster out here the man the voice of fragrance we're here with mr rob kessler from go tyless and he has a, a great variety of male style products which i've actually purchased now that i've discovered them and one of the things that i, I really saw and as many of you stylist guys know it's these collars are a pain at times. Uh, you know, there are a lot of times where we go with magnetic collar stays, but sometimes you just want your collar just to be nice and tight uh, when you don't have a tie on. And this is where Go Tyless comes into play. And I was really fascinated by the the dress shirt or the 
yeah, collared shirt that they have, uh, the million dollar collar where you, if you go without a tie, you look just as crisp and as clean as you would. So Rob, tell us about that. Tell us about where all of this came from, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the idea came from my wedding. If you looked over my shoulder here, uh, before I could even say I do, we got married on the beach in Jamaica, you know, toes in the sand, super chill. I hate wearing ties and my shirt was just collapsed. It, it looked terrible. And what turns out, uh, I came home from the wedding, did a bunch of research. There is so much weight in the collar itself. There's just so much material up there that it collapses the placket of the shirt. And the placket is that part just below with the buttons and the holes. And so I took the idea of a collar stay. I made it nine inches long and I shoved it down the front of the shirt. And so my product, Million Dollar Collar, is actually what I would call a placket stay. So it goes down the front and gives some weight and some structure to that front of the shirt so that the collar doesn't collapse the placket. So you can wear a dress shirt without a tie all day long. It'll look great. You know, you know when you start your shirt, you know, a couple hours later, it's, right. it's sagging and you're adjusting your collar all day long trying to get that placket to look right. Million Dollar Collar does that all day long. And so we started with that product, which can be added to any dress shirt you already own. Simply take it to a tailor or a dry cleaner that does alterations. It's a very, very simple one inch uh, hem that they open, slide it in, it goes in, it lasts the life of the shirt. Or we have our own shirts now called Go Tylus, like you mentioned, million dollar collar built in. We took that same shirt that I wore at my wedding, which is the number one selling shirt in America. We made the fabric better, which is this buttery, soft, bamboo stretch, wrinkle resistant fabric. It's amazing. Uh, we've got a convertible cuff. You know, you said you got all these cufflinks at home. Right. These shirts actually have a buttonhole in between the buttons. Okay. So you could wear cufflinks or not. Uh, they're from extra small to 3XL in white, black, and light blue in slim and standard. I mean, if you can't find a shirt that fits you, um, and you got a different body style, and we'll do our best to get a shirt that does fit you. But we've got great colors, great sizes, um, and that's pretty much the long and short of it. Okay. One of the things I noticed as well, um, I think one of the hardest things we deal with, especially men's clothing, is, can be a bit weird sometimes. I think women have a lot of times a better options from low end to high end. Uh, but with men's clothing, is a lot of times if you really want to look good, you've really got to spend. I really admire the reasonable price point for the ultimate dress shirt at only $69.99. Um, mm -hmm. I thought that was just, especially for what you're getting, even the materials you just listed, that's a really good price point for a very unique item compared to say going to and say an express and h&m or someplace like that um i was really impressed with that yeah i mean ultimately i want to sell as many dress shirts as possible and i want to get these on as many people as possible i mean if i could sell them for 30 bucks i would i just we've got to make a profit at some right. point i mean our first round of shirts we made in los angeles they cost us 45 dollars a piece just to make them and the quality wasn't even that great so mm. uh we're getting the, the manufacturing figured out these are like I would say, you know, as, as good of any shirt that's out there. Um, and at $70 and actually it's, if you buy two, they're, they're 110. So they're 55 okay. bucks a piece, okay. which is even better. Uh, but you see all these new dress shirt companies come out and they're, you know, hundred, 125, $150 right. exactly. shirts. And that's just such a limited number of people that can afford that kind of thing. Um, I, you know, the great thing is I know when you get this shirt for 70 bucks or two for two for one ten that they're going to be your go-to favorite shirts and you'll be back for more. So, um, we're just doing everything we can to get people to try it out because because we know it's such a game changer. There's nothing else like it on the market. Yeah, I just I'm really impressed the fact that it's it's, it's bamboo and just from having that sort of dress shirts but t-shirts that are bamboo. Mm -hmm. A lot of those shirts have like two or three, and I've had most of them for at least 20 years. And these are t-shirts we're talking about, and they hold up so well uh, through multiple wears and washes. And I was probably doing a little bit better care than just throw this on a washing machine um, most of the time. But the, it's such a high quality material as well. And I, I can't harp enough on like the, the quality versus the cost and your return uh, per wear that an individual will get through this as well. Let me ask you though, you know, I talked about, we talked about the um, accessories. Where did, especially like the, uh, the flex cuff, where did the idea for that come from? So that was a kid that I met. Uh, he's in Chicago. He came up with the idea. We actually bought that company uh, a few months ago. Uh, I like <clears throat> I like to roll my cuffs. I don't really like, you know, and there were so many shirts for so many years that had these really cool contrasts. And, right. and even our first, our first rounds of shirts had contrast. And it's like, well, you roll it once and it's still too long. But if you roll it twice, then you miss the contrast. So he came up with this idea. It's basically a button and a hole and a piece of elastic. 
and you connect it to the sleeve of your shirt and then it helps keep that sleeve right there with one fold right below your elbow. So um, we just loved it. We thought it was a great product. I helped him with manufacturing options. Uh, he really couldn't get the price point to where he needed it. He was at like $16, $17 a pair, which is crazy, uh, I think, for an accessory. So right. we looked at our manufacturing people, got it dialed in, and now you can buy them for $9.99 a set. Um, so we've got a bunch of really cool colors. Some, we're starting to do colors that are, you know, he was trying to match the shirt, so it was kind of subtle. Right. I'm thinking, man, match it to your belt and your shoes. Right, and just right. Have this extra accessory that is just a little touch. And all of a sudden you see it. And people are like, well, how's your, how's your shirt staying like that? Or, and you see that little elastic band that kind of matches everything else. So we've got khaki, brown, black, navy, white, light gray, light blue. So really great selection of colors. And we'll do more as, as, as more and more people pick them up. But at nine nine nine, it's a really cool accessory. Yeah, You're going to love that it. Is, that is really good. Is there any new products they want Horizon from you guys? Well, the shirts just came out. So okay. we're, uh, we only had them for 90 days. And we had to reorder because uh, we were running out of sizes. People are just like loving them um so we've got more inventory of the shirts coming in we're, we're really focused on that you know we've spent the last six years selling million dollar collar direct to consumer and right. and i will be the first to admit that that process sucks because i mail you you know five or ten sets of million dollar collar you now have to take that package go find somebody to sew these into your shirt if you don't know how to sew so that extra step has made it difficult but we still manage to sell a half a million units to people in 130 countries and so the people that get it love it. I mean, most of our customers have 13 or 14 sets. That's our average. So, you know, it's one of those products that once you get in once, you know, you see that it's worth it. So we focus on that for a while. That's running really well. Now it's time to move some shirts. So my goal is uh, I always do small goals. So my goal is a thousand shirts. Mm -hmm. And so first it's let's sell the first thousand. Then I want to do a thousand in a month and a thousand in a week and a thousand in a day. I mean, a thousand shirts a day at 70 bucks. You do the math. We got a pretty good company at that point. You know, it's interesting. I just realized I remember, I think I came across the individual million dollar collar a couple of years ago. Now that I think about it as I started all of this and I, I didn't even put two and two together until just now. I was like, oh, that's right. I do remember. So I'll say this. I'm really impressed and I congratulate you on the success and the growth over the past few years. I mean, this is this is really awesome and amazing. Yeah, you know what? It's um, when you're passionate about what you're doing, it's it's easier to keep going. I mean, if you're just chasing the dollar, it's easy to say, "Well, that's not working, and I'm not making any money. I'll go find something else." But I've known for a long time. I mean, I never thought I was going to change the dress shirt industry. Now I am dead set on changing the dress shirt industry. And so, the reason we're making shirts is because we've tried licensing this, and these big brands are like, "Ah, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if my customer cares." I'm like. We got a half a million units and a proven product. I know that they care. Right. And they still won't make that switch. So I said, fine, I'll make a dress shirt. I'll put it into a manufacturer that's going to have to pay attention to me at some point. And so we're building a brand around the technology that I believe and have committed my whole life to. So, uh, you know, it's going really well. We're really excited and uh, just nothing but good things to come, hopefully. Awesome. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, so I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Because we pretty much ran through all the products here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. You're six years. So let me ask you a question. What kind of, I guess, what were some of the major bumps that you experienced as you grew your company? Well, I mean, the biggest one is the word no, which I've heard 10,000 times. Um, but, you know, I always look at products you know, I've grown four companies from nothing to a million in revenue. It right. started from absolutely zero, totally bootstrapped. Uh, Go Tylus would be my fifth. And I always look at it from the customer's perspective. How do I make it easier? How to make it a good buying experience? Um, so came out with Million Dollar Collar. It was originally going to be a shirt. We didn't get funded on our Kickstarter. So then we went to this aftermarket idea because everybody on Kickstarter who was willing to give us money and we really listened to their feedback said, why compete with all the other brands and why can't I upgrade the shirts I already own? So we made this aftermarket version. Um, a lot of people, you know, you get these dumb comments. Well, too bad. Why has it got to be sewn in? I'm not cutting my shirt open. It's like both sides of the placket are visible. So what are you going to do? Put a, like a clear one on? Remember, remember girls in the 90s had those clear bra straps? They weren't right. clear. You, 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 <laughs> you knew exactly what was happening. It's just going right. to look terrible. It's so... It really is the easiest, simplest, least expensive way. I mean, like you said before about the average cost per wear. Look, if you wear the shirt 30 or 40 times, 
on a two dollar product that costs ten dollars to install it costs 30 cents every time you wear it if you exactly. average it out over the life of the shirt because it if it's done right and it's put in it lasts forever so right. you know it it the product is has been a challenge there's i have never been able to say here's how you sell a product that needs to be bought somewhere and taken somewhere else to use i mean there's just nothing like it so it's always we've kind of paved our own path but you know we did this the aftermarket i bought i buy wholesale shirts and then install million dollar collar and sell tommy hilfiger and you know all these brands calvin klein all these brands that you already know i have those shirts in stock that you can buy if you already know your size and say well i don't want to do that I'll buy a shirt that's already done and try it that way. So we have that. We have a VIP mail-in service. So if you want to send me five to 15 shirts, we'll take your shirts in, upgrade them, and then mail them back to you. And we have that. Pro so there's no way for somebody to say no. I mean, that's my my old goal is always to say, if you won't do it this way, how about this way? If you won't do it that way, how about this way? And try to get a guy to say yes. Choice. I like that. I really like that. Well, Rob, I want to thank you for your time. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm amazed in... I'm definitely going to buy some more <laughs> in the near future. As, I like that VIP service. I'm like, I can def I definitely have some shirts I can uh, utilize that service for. I appreciate it. Yeah, so. yeah, that's good. I mean, look, and if you like wearing a tie, this yeah. shirt is great for that too. You know, you always kind of get that gap between the first yes. and second button with yes. this extra rigidity in here, that gap goes away. And then, you know, if you finish the day of work and you want to go out and have a drink and take the tie off and, you know, chill out, boom, you got a great looking shirt and it'll last all night long. Right, exactly. Now, Rob, tell everyone where they can find your products. Best place is GoTylus.com uh, or MillionDollarCollar.com. But GoTylus is where the focus is. That's where the shirts are. Uh, we've got, you know, flex cuff and, and cuff adapters there and, um, and Million Dollar Collar. So you can buy everything right at GoTylus.com. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate you with your time, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really enjoyed my conversation with Rob, especially learning a bit more product that I did not remember that I'd seen before years ago. I believe it was um, Antonio from Real Men Real Style who used to have a sponsorship deal with uh, the Million Dollar Collar. This is before they, I want to say transition, but evolved into Go Tyler's of actually selling these shirts with the placards built in so it was, it was really neat having that epiphany mid conversation uh with robin also i alluded to purchasing i ended up purchasing they have what they call cuff adapters by cuff style this literally these little devices allow you to wear cuff links on shirts that are not french cuff shirts and i actually am wearing uh some cuff links with a, a shirt today and i really love it but i'll give you more about those Next week, let's get into the fragrance of the week. And this week, we're talking about these nuts. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. These nuts is a fragrance of the week. Now, this is another fragrance from my signature scent. I talked about them a while ago when I purchased the sample of H and I C. Uh, this one retails for fifty bucks for a fifteen ml bottle, and I sampled this at the uh, Black American Mall in the uh, Potomac Mills Mall in the Woodbridge, Virginia area. So if you're local or in the area, or if you're from the DMV and you know you guys go down to Potomac Mills to do outlet shopping, stop by, check it out. Let me know what you think. So this one you can find notes of pine cannabis and almonds hence the these nuts uh moniker of the fragrance now at my initial spray and in smelling i got a very bright gingery ish or gingery like opening with that combination of the almonds and the pine for me the almonds kind of mellowed out and the pine really started to mix with the earthiness of the cannabis i enjoyed the fragrance it was unique one of the things that i've enjoyed so far about the fragrances from my signature scent is that except for one which it's supposed to smell like something else uh, all the fragrances to my nose smell very different than anything i've smelled before um, especially even looking at the note breakdowns even with this one with the uh 
pine and the cannabis and the almonds, those aren't notes that I have encountered before. And I said they don't exist somewhere out in the fragrance world, but these are just notes that I have not encountered mixed together before. Um, I really enjoyed the fragrance. I am probably going to pick up uh, at least a sample just to give it a full wear to see how it really works on my skin. But if it's anything like HNIC, it's definitely going to be one that is going to have great longevity and great projection. Now, what I'm wearing today isn't these nuts, but it is a new pickup or a new addition to the collection. And it is a kid, kid, Al Fusan. This is from Latafa. Uh, this is described as a sweet Fruity fragrance and the notes are pineapple and saffron in the top, fir balsam and jasmine in the mid, and then cedar notes, amber and oud on the base. Uh, not getting too much into it because I'm definitely going to give a full review in the next coming weeks. It is one that I think is very, very nice for the springtime. I think it uh, has a great masculine note and that masculine sort of vibe and the pineapple it just wows me. It is not a, hey, I just bit into a pineapple, pineapple, but it is a, a nice, sweet pineapple that mixes really well uh, with the wood notes, particularly that uh, cedar wood, not so much the oud, but it has a nice vibe without getting more into it as uh, I continue to wear it in next over the next couple of days, you know, really get a sense of how it performs in different weather as well as different stuff on my skin as well uh you know everything so a little bit differently depending on the condition so but that's what i'm wearing today i'll assume you kid our first son i always butchered that by latafa and speaking of fragrances is one way you can support us well a couple of different ways you can support us First one is by checking out uh, one of our sponsors, Pete and Pedro. You can use the code EHawks10 or the link in the show notes to get 10 minutes off your first purchase. They have a collection of fabulously inspired uh, fragrances inspired by some of the best of the best when it comes to designer fragrances. I have talked to you on many occasions about Villain, which is their take on Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanilli. Uh, Vanny, I forget how you pronounce it. It is not a one-to-one, -one, but it takes that inspiration and really does something different, and I really enjoy it. Um, I've also tried a couple other ones. Villain, not Villain, um, Rebel, and I forget the other one that I have sampled before, and I love all of them. And they gone up a penny in price. They're now 50 bucks for 50 ml, which is still, excuse me, a dollar in price. It's 50 bucks instead of 49 bucks uh, for 50 ml, but it's still worth it in my opinion. So check them out. In addition to fragrances, they have a whole host of uh, grooming products as well. They start out as a grooming company. So if you are into those sort of hair care products, look for something different and, you know, want to try them out, but don't want to spend all of your money on them check them out and try my discount code below also you can support the podcast support webster style by becoming a patron on patreon for just one three or five dollars you can become a producer at different levels which offers you not just this podcast a few days early but also offers you uh back behind the scenes videos uh uncut videos from events like exotica things that don't end up on youtube or maybe a bit more um uh, risque for youtube depending on where we are going to get our interview so check us out there on patreon and also if you're looking for a different type of energy drink if you're tired of the sugary carbonated energy drinks try w energy day and you can try them today with just 10 percent off by using the code webster man or the link in the show notes now that's all of my affiliate links and how you can support where can you find webster style i'm all over the place all over internet i am on with the nerds of the world twice a week actually probably more than that if you count in the reactions that we do but first of all, I'm over with my man, Brian Saff and the producer, the legend Kuya P with the NRW Checkpoint talking about 
the latest and greatest video game releases of the week and then i'm back with kuya p as well as sean mongo talking about one of my passions wrestling on the kfabi baby the nrw ring generals podcast those drop every week check us out over there also check me out on social media on instagram and twitter let's go just instagram website style Saturian geek on twitter website style and on tiktok underscore website style be sure to check out anything and everything that is website style website style.com and of course you know questions comments want to be on the show drop me a line at info at website style magazine.com Thank you for your time. Thank you for your listening ear. Remember, stay safe out there and be blessed. Smoking hot, rocking this pen so oh. thin. Tie hairline, looking like a skin so pimp. No lie, I'm shopping in the utensil. And stroke, mental, plain dang, homie. I was hoping we could walk out with that bang bang, honey. See them plain James, honey. Get them lame friends, honey. We tell it, fit it crazy like that thing came on me. Hey, mommy. Look a lady, main thing, want me on the scene. Fit popping like a main vein, running blood color, lips smashing with the hand. Clutch money, holding bag, kind of funny. Can you tell me what's the price I got the range? Rover. Hang on me when we walking, looking Gucci like that thing sprayed on me. Walking with a limp like an ankle sprang on me. Yeah, I rocked the cardigan. She don't really want me because no one man should have all that style. Take it out, clothes on the floor, pass it. No one girl should fit it all in them jeans. So take it up and let me see what's under them scenes. No one man should have all that style. Take it out, clothes on the floor, pass it. No one girl should fit it all in them jeans. So take it up and let me see what's under them on the floor pile and no one girl should fit it all in them jeans so take it up and let me see what's under them scenes oh you want to oh i completely read that wrong